here with an episode of Soloing Secrets and this is a huge one. Alan Haldsworth and I've had some requests to feature more of Alan's music and if you search around on my channel you'll find an episode for chord play and an episode of Three for All for Alan Haldsworth and this was a huge task to put this together. I mean Alan Haldsworth's literally a musical mountain to climb and to sum up his Soloing Secrets in you know, like a 20 minute video is literally impossible. You know I would need like a hundred hours just to document all the glorious and wondrous things that Alan Holdsworth did on guitar. Such a unique, you know, musical anomaly. Uh, very forward-thinking and futuristic, and there was nothing typical or cliche about Alan Holdsworth. I mean, he broke, you know, all the rules, definitely helped redefine the guitar, influenced an entire generation of guitar greats, and definitely he's one of my favorite guitarists of all time. There's no question. Alan Holdsworth was a badass. And much like we've done in other episodes in the Soloing Secret series, it's always a great idea when you're scoping out a certain guitarist or band, look at their influences, and that reveals certain things that they like to do in music. And with Alan, his you know assortment of influences is very varied and random and very different than a lot of the other guitarists we've looked at so far. You're going to notice a lot of jazz names and horn players instead of guitarists. And definitely Alan was inspired by guitarists, but he was very much inspired by jazz and classical, and he would emulate and almost kind of channel some of the horn kind of phrasing, all the legato and that smooth, you know, kind of effortless phrasing. He definitely kind of chartered his own path and course using legato, and really when he hit the scene, it was kind of unusual. You know, everybody picked back then, and they were using pedals, and, you know, roaring distortion, and then Alan came out with this ultra smooth, almost saxophone type of approach, you know, very cool. Aside from being a solo artist during Alan's career and lifetime, he worked with lots of important and very influential, you know, fusion and progressive rock uh, musicians. People like Bill Bruford, you know, he worked with him solo and in the band UK. Tony Williams, the band Tempest, the band Soft Machine. There's a whole bunch of bands gone. There's a bunch of bands he's worked with. Uh, Alan even appears on a Crocus album, you know, plays a solo. I think that's on the Change of Address album. But anyway, here's an image showing some of the, you know, groups and musicians that Alan worked with in his career. And there's no question, Alan's music directly influenced an entire generation of very important rock guitarists. I mean, everybody. Alex Lifeson, Joe Satriani, Steve Vai, what, Brett Garset, Sean Lane, Buckethead. There's an entire you know, generation of guitarists that absolutely love Holdsworth. And uh, Guthrie Govan. There's a whole bunch of players. But definitely one of his biggest fans was Eddie Van Halen. Eddie loved Alan Holdsworth. Absolutely. All the early stuff, Tempest and Soft Machine and all that. Tony Williams, Gong, all that uh, early, you know, early 70s to about the late 70s. Eddie couldn't get enough of it. And you can actually hear little glimpses and pieces of what Eddie eventually became hiding in that early Holdsworth music. And as far as Alan's actual soloing secrets, I mean, it's a giant list. There are hundreds of things hiding in his playing style. And, you know, there's lots and lots of things going on. But definitely his technique is just brutal and very intimidating. You can see these photos of him with these crazy chords and just crazy intervallic, you know, stretches and stuff on the neck. So that's scary enough. And then he's using the advanced area, you know, areas and realms of music theory. Atonal and modal, you know, progressions and chromatic ideas and whole tone scales and augmented ideas and diminished stuff. So his music itself is very jarring and kind of unusual, and his technique was very unusual too. But anyway, here's an image sharing about 10 of Alan Holdsworth's soloing secrets. 
But keep in mind, there's hundreds of things that he did. So I'll completely admit, when I was putting this episode together, I was very overwhelmed and intimidated because I thought, how am I going to cover, you know, Alan Holdsworth? Um, and he changed, like he progressed and morphed and grew, you know, into a different guitarist and musician as his career unfolded. Because the early, you know, Alan was very different than the later stuff that he did in his career. But instead of attempting to go through like a career retrospective or, you know, instead of going through everything, I just focused on one of my favorite, you know, Holtzworth related albums, which is Believe It from the new Tony Williams Lifetime from 1975. That's a classic, like progressive funk fusion album. And I love Alan's playing on it. You know, the music itself is great, very inspired, kind of gritty and funky, you know. But uh, we're literally going to look at every song on that album. There's six tracks. And we're actually going to look at, you know, just a kind of a snippet from all six songs. And uh, one of my favorite things about Alan's, you know, playing, aside from all of just the crazy chaos, is the way he would open a guitar solo. And like you'd hear the vamp and the chords, you know, and the, and the groove happening. And then just seemingly out of nowhere, he would just kind of appear in the mix, this kind of eerie entrance, and he would slowly build into his solo. And uh, I love that. And it's one of my favorite things about his playing. He just kind of would have this really signature way of starting a solo. And it was always gradual and then start building. So anyway, we're going to look at, you know, really aggressively at Believe It's music. And there's some, you know, Holdsworth gems here. Fred and, you know, Mr. Spock and some of those, you know, songs. So anyway, here we go. With the opening jam, that's the song Snake Oil, track one from Believe It. And it actually starts with this bass part. And I was looping kind of an emulation of the bass part. It was played on guitar. But, you know, the TC Electronic Diddle Looper was playing this. Which is kind of what the bass was playing, you know, in the song. And I had to kind of fudge the intro just a little bit. Because there is a time change, like a time signature change. And I just kind of, like, barge through it without the time signature change. But, uh, you know, after that bass kind of establishes the groove, then you hear Alan doing this. <laughs> Seven, and he's basically flirting with that, you know, E and D. And he's also grabbing the sixth right there, that C sharp. And then after he's kind of playing around with that sixth, then he grabs the root right there, that E, you know, an octave lower. hearing this rolling kind of pull-off pattern like this. And right there you're literally just doing that E, D, and then grabbing that B, and then you move it up a half step. And you just kind of end on that D right here. right there. And then the next time you do it regular like the first time. And the last time of each cycle he starts moving down in a whole tone scale like this. You're just doing that same. part and it's not really that hard to play compared to other you know Holdsworth moments but that's actually a really good kind of pull-off workout you know if you're working on your pull-offs you know maybe really trying to strengthen up your fret hand and it doesn't seem like that's that hard to play but once you really get in there and start playing and especially along with the album that's a brutal like pull-off workout right there now, as far as the guitar solo from snake oil it actually begins at four minutes and 36 seconds and at that time in the song you'll hear this <laughs> And 
keeps going right there. But what an interesting way to start a guitar solo. And the, you know, the background, the chord progression, is really just moving between, uh, it's like E and F sharp. <laughs> sharp and you hear that and definitely you know Alan was playing an SG at this time you know back in the 70s and it was an SG with a bar he had a white one or a cream and he also had a black one a little bit later but uh, you know he's definitely using the bar a lot for like uh, kind of a smeared kind of uh, almost kind of a vibrato you know at times and then just smeared notes at other times like that <laughs> Between this, you know, whole step, whole step shape right there, you know, hammer onto that F sharp, and then back to E, back to F sharp, and then, you know, kind of pull off down to that D, and then back to E, and then from out of nowhere, it just slides the C sharp into D sharp, and after the slide, you're gonna pull off again D sharp to C sharp, and then grab that F sharp. Kind of reminds me of Alex Lifeson, big time. You can kind of hear the influence that uh, Alan had on Alex right there, like that. And then, you know, really cool. And right there. interesting kind of intervallic, you know, stretch, and he started it there, and eventually, and he moved it right there, so it's the same shape, just kind of moved down right there, and then, and this little, and then eventually you hear this really high stuff up here, Also sounds like Alex Lifeson to me, but uh, check out that solo from Snake Oil. It's a very unusual, you know, introduction for that lead, and then he just starts going crazy after that, of course. Next up's the opening to the solo from the song Fred, and this actually takes place at 3:43 or three minutes and 43 seconds into the song, and this is kind of moving between an E7, and then it ends up with this F flat five or F sharp eleven, you know, tonality. So it's interesting to kind of hear this like really, you know standard sound and then a very unusual sound right after it, but it's like this. This kind of reminds me of Steve Vai a little bit, a little bit of Lyson, a little bit of Vai, and some Van Halen a little bit in there, but keep in mind that's where all this came from, was Alan Hallsworth. So over the E7 part, he's doing this. Right? So similar to some of that phrasing we saw in Snake Oil, but it's different. And uh, you know, one more time right there. kind of shifts into that F flat 5 or F sharp 11. I couldn't decide which way it was, but either way it's the same note. You're doing this. So you're doing like this F and then slide E into F. Like that. And there's your flat 5. Drop that uh, E to F. Grab that B to D right there, and then dip your bar E to F right there, and then dip your bar again right there, G sharp to A, and then it keeps going. But check Fred out, that's definitely a legendary song, and Holtzworth started doing that, you know, when he became a solo artist, you know, long after he, you know, stopped working with Tony Williams, he continued to play Fred. Next up is the opening from the guitar solo from the song Proto Cosmos, which is track three. And this actually takes place somewhere around 27 seconds into the song. So it's pretty much right there at the beginning. And Alan takes off into a solo. 
And it's kind of played over a C sharp seven sus two tonality. Like that. And you got this. played over this uh, C sharp 7 sus 2 kind of flavor and you start it right here right there and you hear one of those kind of signature bar dips right there another one right here and there's a huge stretch right here which Alan's definitely well known for that the C and then G right there. It's so the 10th fret and then a pull off to the 5th. And you're going to slide that G down to F sharp after that. So I'm slowly sneaking in some of these wide intervallic stretches that Alan liked to play. Um, I didn't want to hit everybody over the head with them in this episode, but there's one right there. right there. Next up's the opening from the solo Red Alert, which is track four, and this actually takes place around 57 seconds, and there's a short solo near the beginning and then a longer solo near the end, but this is the uh, kind of shorter solo near the beginning. And Red Alert, this part is basically moving between F and F sharp. <laughs> before Van Halen, before Steve Vai and all this bar manipulation and everything that you hear, Jeff Beck and other players like that. This is Holdsworth in 75 playing like that. <laughs> really expressive phrase there and I'm definitely hearing I mean he may not be actually pulling up on his bar but that first note that D sharp it sounds really weird so that's what I'm doing I'm just doing like a very slight pull up on that first note and then and then right there one more time on that part and then right there First part, and then the second part. And you put it all together. Next up is the opening from the guitar solo from the song Wildlife, and this takes place at 25 seconds into the song. So once again, right at the beginning of this track. And this is really unusual. I kind of picked out the chord progression here. It's like F major, uh, G flat minor, and then C major. It's a really interesting you know, tonality happening right there. And you'll notice Alan you know, opening the solo with this wide intervallic stretch. But instead of just shredding and kind of playing it fast or something up and down, he's phrasing and kind of, you know, really working that intervallic action like this. <laughs> entrance for the solo and it actually starts with that D to E right there and then stretch up to that G back to E and then E to F sharp and he does this 
this, which is really cool. And I think he only picks that first note, that E. Everything else is slurred and slid, and then he picks again on that higher D. And it's just a blur like that. You really don't even notice it until you really listen to it, and then you hear that. song and uh you know just another kind of interesting entrance to a alan Holdsworth guitar solo all right last but not least is the opening from the guitar solo in the song mr spock which is the last track on the believe it album it's also the last example in this lesson and this is kind of played over an e major seven tonality kind of you know based around e major seven and once again alan's doing this really you know intervolic kind of melodic action where he's not really shredding the stretchy you know intervolic idea He's playing it melodically, you know, like this. flavor and you're hearing you know this F sharp to G sharp and then you're moving back to that D sharp which is the seventh you know against E there's a lot of tension right there but you're doing that and you kind of save the vibrato for the second time you know on those notes like that there too. And that last little, you know, hammer on action, hammer on pull off, it's almost like a bagpipe or something right there. Definitely very horn and sax, you know, influence. And once again, it's real quick where you barely notice it until you really get in there and he's doing... It almost sounds like just a two note, you know, hammer on, but it's actually three like that. this episode of Soloing Secrets with this look at Alan Hallsworth and you may have noticed I stayed away from the super super crazy stuff because really like after all of these intros you know for his solos he would just go crazy and you'd hear him definitely build and build from there and start shredding and just go into the outer realm and the outer cosmos or whatever where it's like wow but I did target these kind of opening moments from these solos because I always found it really interesting the way he would start you know, a lot of guitarists, when they begin a lead, they'll just grab some really high-pitched bend or a harmonic, or they'll just immediately start shredding. But with Alan, he always seemed to kind of ease into it, at least during this era of his career. And he continued that later, like in the solo career, too. But he would ease into it. He wouldn't just immediately start showing, you know, all of his bag of tricks. It's like he would kind of, you know, play like a jazz musician, really. He would just kind of gradually start playing some phrases and kind of open the tonality up a little bit and then maybe give you like a little glimpse of what he was going to do a little bit later and just little pieces and parts and then it was almost like it would just come to life and then the next thing you knew it was like a runaway roller coaster but the openings were always kind of like a flower you know blossoming or this just gradual evolution of whatever he was going to do and then he would just literally melt your face off so anyway you know sorely missed on the scene today i love alan Holdsworth for sure but, uh, you know, definitely this is a you know, big challenge as far as tackling his music. But hopefully some of these ideas I shared, you know, helped. So leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.